everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is Saturday, June 13th. We're back with our IKEA bookshelves that we are going to be DIYing into look like built-ins. If you've noticed, my hair has changed. It's about two inches longer and purple now since the last time I vlogged. Um, Jason dyed my hair for me like two weeks ago now. And uh, yeah, we're just still surviving through quarantine and practicing our proper social distancing measures. But onto the bookcases, what we're gonna do now is uh, do some electrical work and then we're going to screw the cabinets together, level, make sure they're level, and then hook them to the wall. So for our plans for the electrical, because our outlets are hidden behind the, can the uh, bookshelves, and we want to be able to use the outlets still, we decided, we decided to use these faceplate covers, and they are attached to a power strip. And then what we're gonna do is place them underneath this bottom shelf, which pops up. So we'll still be able to access the outlets, even though there's gonna be a baseboard around the bottom. And yeah, so I'll just, it's really hard to explain <laughs> having issues. But um, I know it's been a little confusing for me to explain. I'll just make sure that we are filming, that way you guys are able to see kind of exactly what we're gonna be doing. All right, we just place the cover over the outlet and it covers up the outlets. And then like I said, we're gonna leave these power cords and they'll go underneath the bookcase. All right, so what we have done is taken two of the bookcases and got them leveled with each other. So in the bubbles and more bubbles. Um, so we worked on that with these two. And then next what we did is we clamped them together at the bottom. And then how we're going to hook them together is we're going to use carriage bolts that look like this. That went all the way through. All right, so what we've done here is we've just drilled a pilot hole through both sides of the cabinets at the bottom. And then Jason's gonna go back with a bigger a bigger drill bit? Five sixteenths. With a five sixteenths because that is the size of our carriage bolt. Well that's big enough. Kind of busted out the back but not too bad. pull through on this side. The uh, drill bit chipped away at the paint a little bit. So I'll have to fix that, but got other painting we'll have to do. What we do on this side is we put the washer and then the wing nut. We decided to do the washer and wing nut on the side with the doors, uh, just because the doors will be in the way and then I'll have a plate or something that will just sort of sit in that corner to cover that up, so not a big deal. All right, so what we're gonna work on now is getting this last bookcase hooked to the next two. So we'll get that all leveled out and then screw them together just like we did the other one. All right, we've got the last of the carriage bolts going in and then the whole bookcase will be one, all three of them. Then we'll push it back to the wall and secure it firmly to the studs back there. One big unit now. All right, so we got all those hooked together and now we're gonna work on the electrical. Since because we can't reach the outlet behind the bookcase, we and we also want to get lighting around the top, we bought some Philips Hue LED strips 
that we will lay across the top and that projects the light up towards the ceiling and lights the room pretty well because our formal living room doesn't have any overhead lighting in it so we're trying to accomplish that. Okay, so we're all done with putting the extension cords on. So what we ended up doing was, as you saw, Jason stuck the plug part at the top, and then we just ran the cord down the back of this, and we're using these little command hooks to keep the cord straight. And then that will go underneath, and we will use this extension cord that I said before um, that will stick out underneath this shelf that we can plug in those lights. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is push the cabinet back and get it centered in the wall and then screw it in so it doesn't topple over. <laughs> plugged in the extension cords that came down from the top into the ones that are plugged into the outlet and we're going to put the lower shelves back in now cool so yeah and then eventually hopefully today or tomorrow we're going to put some baseboards around here so you won't see those wires at all Here are the light strips that we got. Like I mentioned, they are the Philips Hue ball. Well, not balls, but LED strips. Also, our plan for along the top here that will hide, that will help hide the power brick that's over there, and just the light strips is we're gonna put some crown molding that will go along the top. And yeah, that's the next step. That is the next step. All right, so we did the Philips Hue bulbs so that it would be echo enabled. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that now. Alexa, turn the library off. Yeah. And uh, I had to yell because the echo is in the other room. We don't have one in this room yet. So yeah, next step is crown molding. Like where is it gonna sit? We were planning to align it to the bottom of this, okay. right? What are we doing here? I thought we were doing down here. Okay, you can do that. So okay. then it's going to sit like this. Yeah. You want me to hold it so then you can step away? Yeah. Can you, can you hold it? I'm trying. Okay. I'm going to do my best. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, well, you can definitely see the power brick because it's so massive. I don't know if we move this up if it'll help tighten it. It'll be harder for me to balance it on there, but I can try. Like if it's on this. I'm not holding it anymore. Thanks. Yeah, if from ground level you don't see the power break if it's on that. Okay. All right, so we have moved out to the garage where we are going to be cutting our crown molding. I have this crazy contraption here that is called a Crown Pro. Jason got this for Christmas a few years ago because we are planning to do crown molding in different rooms in our house. We just haven't yet. And 
decided the cabinet was going to be our first go around. So what it's supposed to do is just hold on to your crown for you in the correct angle and give you something better to hold on to in the saw machine. So we're going to hook that up and really all you do is just set that on the saw in the angle that you want it and get that all put together and then you cut. So we're going to work on that, get our board all measured out, cut our pieces and then nail them up. currently trying to figure out angles. <laughs> Math is hard. <laughs> Alright, so right outside corner. Okay, uh -huh. this might be fine. Let's see if this makes sense. Okay. Please don't be ugly. Please don't be ugly. Are you gonna hold that side? Yeah, I'm holding it. Okay. I would say I'm a little long. And this doesn't like, it's like, is it because it's long? morning everyone it is Sunday now <laughs> the next day um, day two of our DIY our IKEA bookshelves as you saw yesterday we had some struggles with the crown molding Jason thinks he figured out the issue and it was just a an angling issue with the crown pro that we were using it fell a couple of times off the saw and when it fell, it was just bouncing the angles into different angles, so things weren't quite lining up correctly. Um, but we only had enough crown yesterday to do this once. <laughs> we cannot do it twice. So we are going to be heading to Lowe's this morning and going to be picking up some new crown. Whether or not we go with the same, I'll show you guys. Whether or not we go with the same design, we're just not sure yet. And when we ordered this crown before, we ordered it online and you can't really see your options online. So we are going to just look at our options. We may end up just getting the same thing, I'm not quite sure, but that's where we're headed now. And then we'll get back to some more DIY. All right, well we are back from Lowe's. We have cut our new crown pieces and this is round two of us trying to put it up. I think two. <laughs> we have no other options. We'd have to go back to the store. So we're gonna do it. It's gonna go great. You guys are gonna watch. Alright, 
so we got the crown molding all up that looks fantastic turned out a lot better than yesterday's but when you measure your angles correctly that's to be expected uh, what we decided here was we are not going to do these what are these angle miter joints miter joints we're not going to do that here um because we end up with gaps here and when we did our kitchen gaps up here right yeah yeah and when we did our kitchen we ended up doing butt joints we where did. the butt joint would be like it's not gonna fit because of whatever but yeah. oh, it could be like this right yeah, yeah. so we're gonna have the front board be the overlapping board just for pretty from the front so we're gonna end up doing joints that look like this just because we think we'll do a better job at it and it'll just look nicer less caulking going on so yeah so we're gonna cut this board that's gonna go all the way down and then recut our sideboards here and nail them in that we're going to nail here, here, and then the corners where the wall and the cabinets have space here. We're gonna go from the molding at the top all the way to the molding at the bottom mm -hmm. and just seal up the, the gaps in between the walls and the cabinet. But yep. holy cow, it's crazy how much the, the molding just made it look like a unit. Like a unit, yeah. Getting rid of the floor gaps is yeah. a big difference, you know? That's nice. That's the goal. Cool. All right. We got the lattice board cut for this length. Just a little bit too long for this. Okay. So let's see if it fit over here better. We, we knew this These was going to be These are very similar in sizes. One was just higher than the other. Okay, so that's a bright wall. Yeah, this one can yeah. be right wall without it being a big so deal, right? Those are in. Let's just basically what it's gonna look like. Yep. Yeah. This is a do your best to caulk the rest situation. Because <laughs> yeah. the wall's like curved relative to it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So cool. just lean that in the corner there. Nice. All right, so we got all the boards measured and we got the ones picked out that we're gonna do in their specific spots. So now we're just gonna nail them up. Then we'll be all finished with all of our nailing. And then it'll just be stick down for the top of this for the lights because they have little sticky things on them. And then I'll need to wood putty these nail holes here. And then paint it white. Done with the nail gun. <laughs> yeah, done with the so nail that's gun. That's what that ended up looking like with the lattice in the front. Covered up that gap. So we just need to caulk and fill in the nail holes and paint. Looks good. It's, it's not that bright, it's fine. All right, so at the top here, you can see where we screwed them to make sure the cabinets weren't gonna come away from the wall. And then we have our extra, and Jason just changed the colors. Um, we have the extra outlets up here in case we needed more lighting up here or anything like that. 
And then these are the LED strips that we have. And those look pretty cool. We're able to change them colors, which will be fun for holidays and things. And over down on this side for just wire management, we zip tied things and laid the brick on the side closer to the front so that just angles and things make it so that when you're looking straight on, you don't see the brick. So that is what that looks like. Looks awesome. All right, and now what I've done is I've gone to each nail hole that we put in the boards and I put in some wood filler. So those are all around. Um, our wood filler just happens to be a tan color, so no big deal because I'll paint over it white. Um, so yeah, so those are all over. Just letting those dry for a little bit. And next we're going to do the caulking everywhere here along the sides and things so we can close up all of our seams. Alright, well as you can see we have caulked everywhere, filled in the gaps in the molding. I have painted all of the trim and I think it turned out pretty well. It looks pretty good with the cabinet. The color differences, I don't think they're noticeable at all. I think it looks really, really good. You can see we filled in the cult gap here. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed following along on this DIY, the IKEA cabinet with us. We came across just a few challenges, but nothing too crazy out of our reach. I think it ended up looking amazing. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'll put a link in the description to the IKEA cabinets that we use. I hope if you guys are trying to do something similar that this video was helpful to you. I don't think what we did was too complicated. It definitely took us about three weekends to get it done just between the first actual building of all the furniture because we all know how IKEA is. <laughs> And then the second weekend was when we put all the trim around. And then the third weekend was when we did the filling in of the nail holes and the caulking and the painting. And then that was finished. But yes, overall, I think it ended up turning out wonderful. And thank you guys all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ninety-five point four. Still. What are you, a vampire? Yeah. 98.5. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Are you a vampire? Just run cold? You need to suck my blood? No. Okay. I'm doing the bar to put your